Who else wasn't here last week? Lily, were you here last week? You gave me one. I gave you one, that's right. Yeah, I was in Richmond. Yeah, I gave you one. Thank you. Nobody else was here, okay? Dan, have you been here last week? Okay. Here, here, here. All right. And last week, we talked about, you know, with the leper, the healing of the leper, that sin makes us unclean before God. And we're all born in the sin because of Adam and Eve. A lot of us have health problems because of our sin. Our bodies fall apart. Right? And uh, because of sin. The sin makes us unclean before... Uh, uh, God, let me uh, move right along here. Sin makes us unclean before God. We talked about verse 12. And uh, remember the... Uh, He's still up in the Galilean area, uh, Capernaum, and this leper came to him. Now remember, lepers were kept away in leper colonies and stuff because they were considered unclean, uh, uh, ceremonial unclean, but also they're afraid of uh, you know spreading the, 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 the virus or whatever and get everybody else uh, leprosy. And so uh, you had to be like six feet from a leper, and they had to yell, unclean, unclean, unclean. Uh, and then, or if it's windy that day, and the wind's blowing kind of like the leper, and it's going to you know, blow past the leper onto somebody else, you had to be like a hundred some feet away. And so, um, but Jesus, he came to Jesus and says, if you are willing, I know that you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I am willing. And, uh, and it says the next point we had, Jesus is willing to cleanse us. You know, he went to the cross to cleanse us. He, he was the only one because he was not tainted with sin. Amen. You know, he was born of a virgin. Uh, no male part involved you know, in his uh, conception. And it was the Holy Ghost. And he was 100% man, 100% God, 100% of the time. And he was the only one that can um, paid the penalty. He yes. was the unblemished lamb yes. of God. Yes. Because we're all blemished. Amen. Because of sin. And then we covered, uh, then the last one we covered was, are you willing to bring others to Jesus? Because remember, Jesus told them not to say a word, but go to the priests, and they had to go through this eight week, or eight day cleansing type thing, before he even went back to see his family. Now he, he you know, didn't hug his wife for years, he didn't hug his children for years. Uh, he was kept away from society, of the loneliness and everything he felt. And then Jesus cleansed him and made him whole again. And only Jesus can make us whole. Amen. Only Jesus. And so, um, but then he went and he was too excited. He went and told everybody. Remember, he had to go to Jerusalem. That's where the temple was. That's where he had to go show it to the priests. Remember, the synagogues were just these little uh, colony type things where they just had worship service. They always had a guest speaker. Uh, but they had to go actually to the temple. So uh, that was miles away, so he had to go there. And so on his way there, he was just excited, and he was skipped to Lou My Darling yeah. all the way there, telling everybody about Jesus uh, and healing him. And, but now, are you willing? Jesus is willing to cleanse, but are you willing to go fishing? Are you willing to bring them to Jesus? Amen. And so are you willing to bring others to Jesus? All right. And then so here's our introduction. There's my little lamb. All right. Did I skip my first point? No, that's my introduction. All right. So we're going to be talking about our our miracle working Savior. All right. Remember we're on Luke uh, 5. Starting at verse uh, 17. How did I get to John? Here I am. Um, so our miracle working Savior, the lame walk, the blind see, the dead live again. And even the wind and waves obey him. A miracle demonstrating his authority and his power and our responsibility of bringing people. We see the authority of Jesus to forgive sins what we're going to see here. All right, we're going to see the power of Jesus to heal. Uh, and we're going to also see the responsibility of, of believers to bring others to Jesus. To bring others to Jesus. 
And so this is a cr critical passage of Scripture that we're going to cover today. It deals with the forgiveness of sin. The most important issue that confronts man. Can a man's sin be forgiven? Truly forgiven? If so, is Jesus Christ the one who has the power to forgive sins? And the answer is why? Yes. yes. Even the prophets testify. To him give all the prophets witness that through his saying, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Yes. Remission, the forgiveness of sin. There is no sin that we've ever done that cannot be forgiven by God. Amen. None. None. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see that today. And uh, and before we get into our first point, uh, in your bulletins you see a um, <clears throat> wrong thing. A share Jesus without fear. I took it from the. Uh, well, share Jesus without fear that we did a few years back, but also to help you in witnessing, and it's a nice little cheat sheet. And um, and what you do here is the probing questions you want to ask somebody. You know, when you're you know at work or you're you know getting a drink at the water fountain or by the the vending machine as you're complaining how much it costs to get a soda these days in a vending machine. <laughs> and so, do you have any kind of spiritual beliefs? To you, who is Jesus? That's a victim. To, who, to you, who is Jesus? Do you believe there's a heaven and a hell? People have to say, no. But then when you ask them, if you died right now, would you go, would you go to, uh, to heaven? I mean, where would you go if you died right now? If heaven, why? And, and, and if they, usually they'll say heaven, but how do, you, how do you say you're going to heaven if you don't believe in heaven? And then um, if what you believe were not true, would you want to know? Because there's so many. Remember again, I said before, that we're not in an Acts 2 generation anymore. We're in an Acts 17 where there's many gods mm -hmm. here in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. we got to make everybody happy. Amen. Except the Christians. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that get kicked around, tossed to and fro, and everything like that. And then what you do here, the scriptures here, like Romans uh, 3.23 for all sins, and then your next um, one on Romans 6.23, what you do is you would write it going this way and top your Bible, so when you're having them read it, you're looking at where to go next in your Bible, okay, for help to memorization, uh, to help you know where you need to go, and have them read the scripture. Then you ask them, what does this mean to you? Let them, and while they're reading, pray that God's working in their heart. Pray that God's working in their heart. And so you go through all those, and then uh, the closing key questions is, are you a sinner? Do you want to be forgiven for your sins? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross for you personally and rose again? Are you willing to surrender your life to Christ? Are you ready to invite Jesus into your heart and into your life? And then be silent and, and pray. You know, pray for them and, you know, as, you're, as you're going through all this. Um, and also, there's a sample prayer. There's nothing written in stone on how to um, you know, prayer. A lot of times I'll ask people to... Um, I'll ask people um, to pray their own, you know, for their own heart um, prayer. But that's just if you don't know, you can do something similar there. But anyway, this is for your own um, edification uh, and to help you in witnessing to somebody, uh, especially family members and stuff like that. So, um, but anyway, let's take a look at the first few verses here, um, uh, 17 and 19 of chapter 5 of Luke. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there was Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. To heal them. Okay? And my first point, I have friends bring friends to Jesus. Mm -hmm. right? Friends bring friends to Jesus. And we see here that the critics are always in the house. No matter where you go, there's always going to be a critic. No matter if you're in church or if you're anywhere, if you're standing in line at Walmart, there's always a critic. Or, or somewhere. There's always a critic in the house. These Pharisees and doctors, they were coming from all over Jerusalem. They were coming from 
uh, Galilee, they were coming from Judea, they were coming all over, and notice what it says here, that they sat by, sitting by, wasn't it? They were just sitting by, murmuring, complaining. How many times do we have that in the church too? You have the workers doing the work, and then you have the critics over here saying how bad their work is, but they're not coming and helping you have that in every single church. You always got those critics. These doctors and of the law, the scribes, that they, they, they think they know the law, and they've studied the law, and they've studied the scriptures, and they're sitting by listening to Jesus uh, teach, and they're trying to find something to get them out. They're trying to trip them. They're trying, they're sitting by here. And so the committee had come to sit, to investigate, to observe, Jesus, not to participate in the service and the ministry, they were sitting by, not sitting at his feet, right. like Martha, right. right? I mean Mary, excuse me. Mary and Martha, remember how Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet? That's what we need to be every day, Amen. sitting at Jesus' feet. Amen. You know, listening, reading his word, studying his word. And, and Jesus' power was set to face, face this opposition. The power of God was upon him, and he continued right on ministering. He did not let those who just sat by uh, and were critical to affect his teaching. Because he wasn't here for them. He wasn't there to please. Now, we're not supposed to be men pleasers. Amen. We're supposed to be pleasing God. Amen. I don't care what other people think. Yeah, Only what God thinks. He's the one i got to answer. Yeah, that's right. I mean, people come and go. I always tell people before, you know, when being a pastor of a church, you know, I say, well, it's just like driving a bus. Mm -hmm. Some people get on and some people get off, but God still wants you to drive. Mm -hmm. uh, drive the bus. And so, but um, there are always those who would just sit by, who, um, <clears throat> who are just the spectators, never really listening or learning, never really becoming involved, but they always have a complaint, don't they? Amen. There are always those who are critical, uh, who set themselves up as knowing best, I know more than you do, who are censors and judge of what the preacher or teacher does. They listen and watch to make sure nothing is too different. Amen. If it is, they begin to criticize and they judge. Amen. The preacher or the teacher must continue on in his call and ministry and not worry about the critics. And that's what the Jesus was, was doing here. And, and so the preacher teacher must continue on with that call in ministry as we see in Romans 14, 4, where it says, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth for fall. Yea, ye shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. I don't serve any person. I serve Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the only one that I really I have to answer. You know, he's the one. And so the critics are going to come. I mean, a lot, like I heard uh, D Dr. Uh, uh, David Jeremiah this morning, I was, I was listening to his message, an awesome message, and he's, he's talking about the giants in people's lives. And um, he had mentioned about, you know, and, and it's basically on um, being encouraged. Encouragement. You know, pastors need encouragement, too. Amen. And, and members need encouragement. That's what the church is here for, is to encourage one another, right? Yes, right. Right? We're hospital centers. We're hospital sick. We need to encourage one another. But anyways, he said that a, a pastor friend of his, you know, kept on getting these uh, hate mail and stuff like that. And he said, well, what'd you do about it? He said, well, I wrote him back. And and I said uh, that um, I'm sorry to say, but somebody is uh, writing me all this stuff and everything and signing your name to it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I thought that was uh, you know hilarious. But uh, but we see here now. Is that, um, and it says that, behold, men brought in a bed, a man in a, a bed, brought in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought, um, sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and laid him down through the tiling with his couch and into the midst before Jesus. Amen. So you know, these friends are taking time. Now remember this house. Now they didn't have a big house. And this house was packed. Yeah. 
It was a full house. Yes. And, and, and they couldn't get in any other way to bring this man who followed you. This was their friend. Yes. And so how do we know there was four men, though? How do we know? It doesn't say here in Luke, but Mark gives us a good description. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And, and the word born um, is uh, areo, hero, to raise up, to elevate, to lift up. They were carrying yeah. their friend. They were bearing his burden yeah. to bring him to Jesus. Yeah. To bring him to Jesus. And many things we don't know about these four men is their name, their ages, their position, or their life but the duration of their faith in Christ. But what we do know about them is that they, they were concerned about a sick friend. Yeah. They believed Christ could meet this need. Yeah. And for his need. They were burdened enough to go and bring him. And we don't even know where they really came from with him, but they carried him all that way yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. And then they couldn't get in because of the crowd. They couldn't get in. And so the question is today, are you burdened about your spiritually sick friends? Mm -hmm. Are you weighed down because of their unbelief or because of where you, if they died right now, and so many, look at what happened in, in, uh, in Virginia Beach. Yeah. People didn't think they were going to die that day. They went to work as normal. Yeah. We never know when we tie our shoes at night or in the morning, who's going to tie them at night. And they and people were killed in this massacre in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. And so awful, evil is among us. Yeah. Evil is among us. And so do they weigh heavy on your heart? Do your, your friends weigh heavy on your heart? When people do not go, people die in their sins. Yeah. People die in their sins. Today, most um, most going out and evangelizing is done by pastors. But it's not up to the pastor. Right. It's up to the church Amen. to go. To go. I mean, look what happened in the early church. In Acts 8-4, uh, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Men, women, you know, they went and preached the word and, and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. They were scattered because they were under persecution, but that didn't stop them from spreading the good news. Amen. Are we under that kind of persecution here in America? Not yet, but it's coming. Amen. It's coming. It's coming. And so all believers are to be ministers Amen. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we see that in Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body yeah. of Christ. Amen. We're not supposed to be pew sitters. We're supposed to be goers, Amen. doing. The service entrance is really outside that door. Amen. That's where the service entrance is. Yeah. And so we, we see here a broken roof now. Because they had a they, they looked up. Mm -hmm. How am I going to get him to Jesus? Mm -hmm. How are we going to get this man to Jesus? And they looked up and they said, Aha! The roof. Yeah. The roof. Yeah. And this is what kind of what, uh, <clears throat> what their houses looked like. They had the animals even living with them at the bottom half. You know, lamb sheep and with that. But if you just think of that house, and up on top was the wood beams and the straw and things like that, and they had these uh, clay-like tiles uh, going through and everything. Because it says here uh, in Luke that, um, and when they could not find by what way they might bring him in, because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch and into the midst before Jesus. Mm. They looked. And so they approached the house with their friends in, the, in his bed. The house too proud to get in. There are always obstacles when we try to bring somebody to Christ, isn't it? Yes, yes. Always yes. obstacles. Fear, opposition, mm -hmm. and or the pleasures of this world Amen. Yeah. keep people away from Christ. Mm -hmm. But we, we, need, we need to be overcoming these obstacles. You know what do they do? We need to overcome these obstacles. What do they do? They looked up. The best thing to do is always look up. God's going to give you the answers. And so we need to always look up to find the answer. The root provides route to get their friend to Jesus. Many people today get upset if you know if they spill something on the carpet, they pitch a fit. 
Or how about on a tablecloth? Oh my, the world has just stopped. It's terrible. How many times you go over somebody's house and everything, and you, they give you a drink and they give you a coaster going on? <laughs> they do it with a nice little nod. <laughs> they just think this guy, they're ripping his roof off. What about State Farm here, huh? <laughs> like a good neighbor, they're not going to be there. He put a hole, a big enough hole for a man to get through. Wow, what a hole! That's a big hole. And so they, um, and so this will be costly, wouldn't it, to the, to the owner of the house? But note that um, that the rope it said that the roof was broken up, and we see that in Mark two four. When they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. When they had broken it up, they let him down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. They wanted their friend to Jesus, yeah. and they did whatever it took yeah. to get him there. But, you know, witnessing to somebody is possible. Sometimes we lose friends. People don't like to hang out with pastors. You know, I, went, I did my nephew's wedding years back. Everybody got invited to the fishing trip except all the men except me. Because they were drinking. But their excuse was, well, we didn't think they'd like to go. <laughs> I love fishing! Yeah. Give me a Mountain Dew and shut up. <laughs> but that's how they treat you know people like that because they want they're in the darkness, they're in the world, and, and if somebody's there that's shining some light, mm -hmm. yeah. you know they didn't want to track Hannah to them while they're in the boat. Mm -hmm. right. And um, but whatever the cost, we must get people to Christ. The act of letting their friend down through the roof was an unusual demonstration of their faith. Yes. Their faith. Their faith. And the next point we have is our greatest need is spiritual forgiveness. Amen. Our greatest need is spiritual forgiveness. Take a look at verse 20. And it says, And when they saw their faith, when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Forgiven these. They believed that sickness, paralysis, blindness was brought on by their sin. That's, right. That's how they fought back in the day. Remember, remember the apostles asking Jesus about that in, in John 9 2, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, right. that he was born blind? Yeah. What was the cause? Who sinned? You know, this is what their, their mentality was. But notice what Jesus did. He didn't say you are now healed or just healed them. Mm -hmm. He went to a deeper level yeah. mm -hmm. where the problem really was yeah. was the sin. <coughs> so many of us are carrying burdens of our sin yeah. and, and the grief of our guilt that we are unable to walk. Mm -hmm. Because we're heavy laden down by our burdens. Mm -hmm. and, and so... What did he say? He addressed the spiritual need first. He did, you know, and he said, "Your sins are forgiven thee." Our main uh, need is not physical. Our main need is spiritual yes. forgiveness. Yes. It was spiritual healing and the forgiveness of his sins first. Then the physical healings came second. Jesus met the deeper cause, the deeper root of what he was. Doing. And he was also shown everybody and the doctors and the Pharisees and all those that were in the house mm -hmm. that he has the authority yes. to yes. forgive sin. Yes. Because he is God in the flesh. Yes. And Jesus, um, because, um, um, and, and, and the thing is, is that if, um, then the physical um, healing came second, right? Because, you know, we're going to get older. We're, we're going to have ailments as we get older anyway, right? right? We're going to die. When Jesus raised somebody from the dead, they again had to die. Yes. When Jesus wept at Lazarus' tomb, it wasn't a weeping because he had died. 
He had a week probably because he had to bring them back. And he had a week because of the unbelief that was surrounding him. Amen. He wept yeah. for the hearts of the people that were surrounding him. Yeah. And um, what the thing is is that, you know, in, in what did Jesus say in Matthew 18, 8? Therefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Cast that them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life whole or mean rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, I'd rather limp into heaven than run into hell. Amen. I'd rather Amen. limp into heaven than run into hell. Forgiveness is both mankind's greatest need and God's most important gift. His love for us, he died on that cross. What is the first words Christ said after his beatings, after him being nailed through with his hands and his feet? What was the first words out of his mouth? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's forgiveness. Forgiveness. Jesus came into the world to save his people. Yeah. From their sins. Yeah. In Matthew 121, he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call him <coughs> Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Mm-hmm. And then look. Jesus means what? Yahweh saved. Or Yahweh is salvation. Same as what Joshua means in, in the Hebrew in the Old Testament. Through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness. When they put their faith and trust in him, repent of their sins, he paid that penalty on the cross. He bled. Because, you know, his blood was pure. Wasn't tainted with sin. And he was the unblemished lamb that paid the price for us. For us. And through his name, everyone who believes and receives forgiveness of sin. In Acts 2, 26, 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness yes. of sins. An inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Jesus saw their faith, the faith of their friend as well as of the sick man. Amen. The faith of friends had a large part in the man's sins being forgiven. Yes. What a lesson to us and for our family and for our friends. In Romans, because we are to what? Carry each other's what? Burdens. Alright? And we are to bear each other's infirmities. In Romans 15.1, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, not to please ourselves. In Galatians 6.2, bear each one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. We are to bear one another's burdens. And uh, the last point I want to go with is Jesus knows us. Yeah. He knows us completely. Because notice here in the last few verses, 21 through 26, and the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye have in your, in your hearts, whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but they that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon the earth to forgive sins. Yes. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch yes. up, and go into thy house. Yes. And immediately he rose up before him and took up and whereon he lay and departed in his own house and glorified God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were yes. filled with the fear saying, We have seen strange things today. Yes. Because Jesus knows us. Jesus uh, it says when Jesus perceived their thoughts. Perceived is epigenautsko. To become um, to become thoroughly acquainted with, to know thoroughly, to know accurately, to know well. So the scribes and the Pharisees del- deliberated with each other. Who is that that speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God? Hello? Amen. Right. Jesus is showing them that he is God in the flesh. In the flesh. 
And so, um, and so he describes the Pharisees, these holy men of Israel, have a theological objection. They say Jesus blasphemes by claiming to, to do what only God can do. They have a proper theology of forgiveness. Only God can ultimately forgive sins. That theology is correct as far as it goes, but they're not looking at the whole picture because Jesus is God. Amen. And Jesus is showing him this. I mean, Jesus here, God is among them. Walking, talking. And they didn't know their own visitation of God. They did not recognize. In, in Luke 19, 4, 44, it says, You shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children with thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which came in AD 70. Yeah. It came to be because they did not know the time of their visitation, mm -hmm. that God was with them. Jesus knew what was in in, um, in in Jesus knows what's in our thoughts and in our hearts. Notice where it says, "What reasons ye in your hearts?" He says in in First John three twenty says, "For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things." He knows all things. In Psalm 139, 4, says, "For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest all together." God knows what you're going to say before you even say it. God knows our thoughts. God knows our thoughts. And so the Son of Man hath power upon earth to what? Forgive sins. His authority, remember we talked about um, a few weeks ago and last week and so, his authority over demons, his authority over diseases. Remember the demon, the demon that was in the church, in the synagogue? And then over his, his mother, uh, Peter's mother-in-law uh, was ill, and over diseases, and over his creation with the catch of the fish. He brought the fish uh, to Peter and them. Uh, his authority over defilement. All right, the leper. And and his authority to forgive sins. We see the authority of Christ all over Luke. The man was paralyzed, but he was made whole again. Spiritually and physically. Yeah, right. He picked up his bed and what did he do? He went home. I bet you he ran home. I bet you he, he probably, he, 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 we don't know how he got paralyzed. We don't know if it was a disease, if it was an accident, or what. But he had to walk for years and years and years and years. Probably never, he, could, probably, he may have been born that way. We don't know. But the whole point is that he probably ran. He could skip, he could walk, he was completely whole. But the most important, he was light because Jesus took his sin. Forgave him. How is it when we forgive others, don't we? You know, Jesus said, remember what Jesus says in our prayer that, you know, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. So basically what we're telling God, you know, is that we're, we'll forgive, you, know, you forgive our debts as we just like we forgive our neighbors for our, our, our person who offended us. And we need to forgive. Why? Is it really for the person that offended you? Yes. No, it's for yourself. Yes. Offense is like a bullet that gets hit. Just like McKinley. He, died, he didn't die of the bullet wound. He died of the infection yes. of the bullet wound. Right. And what, what does an offense do? It eats away. Things yes. that we say. Remember the old saying, sticks and stones? Yes. Um, um, they break my bones, my names will never hurt. That's a bunch That's of right. bop. It does. And it's offense. And it hurts. And it festers in us. Yeah. And then it turns to bitterness. Yeah. And it turns to anger. Yeah. It turns to hatred. Yeah. And then it turns to loathing. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it turns to murder. Yeah. Cain and Abel. Yeah. Cain and Abel. Yeah. And so when we forgive others, you know, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, we just for, we forgive them. And, 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 but it takes time to forgive it takes time to go through the process of forgiveness. You know, we need to forgive others just like Jesus did. But we're not Jesus. We can't be beat up, nailed on a cross, or anything like that, and look at everybody and says, oh, forgive them. We'll sit out there stewing. That's how we are, our sinful nature, right? But Jesus wasn't simple, he was pure. 
And so he was free from the bondage. Uh, he was, this man picked up his bed. He was free from the bondage of sin. He was free from the paralysis. He was unshackled. And he probably skipped all the way home, praising God. And you know, another captive free. But remember when we first started Luke, what did Jesus read when he was in uh, Nazareth, when he went to his own synagogue? Remember what he read? Isaiah 61.1. It said, The Spirit of the Lord God is with me, upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. We see that all right here in the uh, all what we've been talking about. And in John 8.36, and Linda mentioned that earlier in her, in, her, in her testimony, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You shall be free indeed. So do you have a friend that needs Jesus? Will you bring them to Him today? Have you repented of your sins and asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins? Jesus knows your heart, your pain, your joy. You can't hide anything from Jesus. And, uh, and Jesus knows your heart. And pray to receive Christ today. Pray for a friend. Bring the, that person's name to the throne of grace today. Pray for that person that they may come to know Jesus. And come to the altar because he is waiting for you.